Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. You are welcome to the Daily Devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion on this 12th day of April 2024. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies that you have blessed every one of us with. Thank you for bringing us into your presence. The Bible says in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We thank you for the opportunity to look into your word. We are asking, O oh Lord, that you will grant us understanding of your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to everyone that is present at this meditation today. And at the end, glory, honor, and adoration will be to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, the topic that we have is on healthy attraction. On healthy attraction. And the text is from the first epistle of John, chapter 2, from verse 15 to verse 17. And I'll read. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Unhealthy attraction. There exists a great difference between the principles of God's kingdom and those of the world. The principle of the kingdom of God is different from the principles of the world. In actual fact, they go in opposite directions. They are opposite to one another. In the kingdom, you live by dying. That is the principle in the kingdom. You live by dying. You get by giving. If you want to get, you will give. You know the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That is a principle in the kingdom. You lead by serving. Jesus told his disciples, Whoever amongst you wants to be the greatest, he must be servants of all. But you will see that it is not so in the world. In the world, for you to live, you have to struggle. It is a struggle to live. As opposed to the kingdom principle. For you to live, it is dying. 
This is not referring to physical death, of course. For you to get, you will strive to get. You will take every means to try to get. That is the principle of the world. And they will go to every extent, whatever name they call it, whether it is stealing, whether it's extortion, whether it is uh, everything you can think about. If they want to get, they will struggle to get. But the kingdom principle is that for you to get, you give. The Bible says, there is a man that scatters. He opens his hand and he scatters. And yet he increases. There is another one who withholds, who holds on to what he has more than is necessary, and he tends to poverty. That is the kingdom principle. A man's scattering is increasing. A man's sowing seed is increasing. But the principle of the world is different. If you want to get, you will struggle and struggle to get. The kingdom principle says, you lead by serving. But the world says, for you to live, it's also a struggle. And you must do everything, including ensuring that those who are ahead of you, you find something to do with them. That is the principle of the world. The passage before us today is encouraging us. That our love should not be about this world system. Our focus should not be on the things that are in this world. It tells us that if anyone loves this world, this system, everything, he says the love of the Father is not in him. In actual fact, the love of this world heats up the love of God in the heart of man. Because the principles of the world, they are diametrically opposite to the principles of the kingdom of God. The love of the world is not God's type of love. The love of the world is full of lust of the flesh and the perishable ego daring. What the world loves is lust. Lust for power. Lust for position. Love for influence. Love for the things that the flesh desires. That is what the world loves. Words for perishable ego. Love for perishable ego. That is what the word love. And in the passage, it clearly states that everything that is in the world, and Apostle John listed those things that are everything in the world. He says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the world. Dear listeners, every love in the world or every love of the world and its systems is under these three categories. is love for the flesh, love of the highs, pride of life. If you remember in Genesis, that for Eve, when the serpents came and gave her the fruit from the tree that God has said they are not to eat, Eve saw that this fruit was good to the highs. His highs saw it. The fruit must have been very beautiful. 
Maybe it's even a ripened fruit. And if so that it was desirable, that is, there was a lust in her, it looks satisfactory to our flesh. It was appealing to our flesh. And then, remember, part of what the devil promised was that that fruit had the potential to make her to be like God. And you see, that was the desire. Oh, I will not just be a creation of God. I will be like God. I will be able to know the good from the evil. He wanted to go to, in quotes, the next level. And that is exactly what the devil uses. That is what the world system operates with. I will give an example. Even in the advertisement world, the advertisements that go out, they go out to attract the lust of individual flesh, the lust of our eyes. They appeal to our ego. They appeal to our pride. And anyone who is taken with it will be completely wiped off. May you not be wiped away with the things of the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Our passage today is saying, do not love it. Don't set your affection on the things of the world. Another example in Genesis chapter 11, the Tower of Babel, the people that desired, that they wanted a tower that will go very high. They want to reach, to reach heavens. Humans then desired that they can just take a trip. They will go to the heavens. They don't need to wait for God to come and commune with them. They also will be at liberty to use their inventions to do whatever they do. And that is what you see in several things in the world today. Even in some of our technologies, they are playing God. They want to be God themselves. So many scientific discoveries or experiments that are being carried out is that people also desire to be God. Jesus Christ made it very clear to his disciples that they were not of the world. And their listeners, the message to us today is that even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We are not to succumb to the dictates of what the world systems want. We are not to be conformed to the world. That is the message to us today. They are not of the world. The disciples of Jesus Christ are not of the world. They may be in the world. In which case, we are pilgrims in this world. Heaven is our home. We must note, dear listeners, it is impossible to have both the love of God and that of the world to dwell in a particular individual at the same time. At the same time. It is impossible to have the love of God and that of the world to dwell in a particular individual at the same time. If you love God, you will not love the world. And if you love the world, 
the love of the Father will not be in you. The loyalty and the desires of a Christian should be to God and nothing more. Nothing more. Where is your loyalty? Where does your loyalty lie? Is it in God or in the things of the world? Many Christians define themselves romancing with the things of the world, finding pleasures in it. You cannot love God and love mammon. If you love God, you will run away from iniquity. If you love God, the love of the world will not be in you. The loyalty and desires of a child of God should be to God. Any other privilege added to him by God should be seen as an instrument of service unto God. Your desire should not be to amass the things of this world. And of course, the devil continues to use the lure of the, the flesh, the, the, the lust of the eyes, pride of life. He continues to use it to lure people to sin. The world today presents an unhealthy attraction to God's children. And it has a hidden intention to distract and to destroy. The devil comes cunningly. He is always subtle. In actual fact, he appears as an angel of light to the undiscerning heart. And I pray for everyone that is listening to my voice this morning. That God will grant unto you the heart of discernment. That when the devil comes to tempt, to make you to fall, that the Holy Spirit in you will raise a standard against it. And victory will be yours in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil still uses the same principles that he has always used. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The intention the devil has is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 10 and verse 10. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Dear listeners, today, do not be a victim to unhealthy attraction of the world system. The world wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I pray that you will not be a victim, but you will be a victor. We must depend on God's grace to remain faithful to him as we await the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. We need that grace. And if we ask him for that grace, he will grant us the grace. Grace to remain faithful in a world that is polluted with so many things. Faith to be faithful when the enemy is attracting us with several things of the world that seems to be alluring. Grace to stand firm. Grace to be able to say, Others may, I cannot. Often time, the devil will say, but others do it. Why don't you join it? The bank wagon. 
Don't forget, the Bible says, the road that leads to destruction is very wide. And there are many people traveling on it. I pray for everyone hearing the sound of my voice. You will not travel on that highway of destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, narrow is the way that goes to eternal life. Narrow is that way. And very few travel on it. For everyone listener this morning, I pray that that narrow way, your path will be established in it, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because that is the way of eternal life. Shun every unhealthy attraction that wants you to leave your eternal glory. It has often been said, that the devil will give you a pence, but he will take a pound. That is exactly what it does. It is our prayer that you will not lose that glory that God has given you, but you will stand firm against the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is what the devil still uses. It is the principle of this world. Why don't you pray this prayer? Deliver me from the attraction of the world, O Lord. Pray it from your heart. Deliver me, O Lord, from the attraction of the world. When the devil is attracting, I pray for everyone that has listened to this message today the grace to stand firm, unmovable, continuing to abound in the work of the Lord. May that grace be yours in the name of Jesus. Everything that the devil tries to use to steal, to kill, and to destroy, I pray that from this moment, your choice will always be life and life in Jesus Christ. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us today. Have a wonderful and a blessed day. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.